everybody, so today I'm talking about the Rode Wireless Go and the Zoom F2 field recorder. I've been using the Rode Wireless Go, the first one, for a couple of years. I've used it for talking heads like this. I've also used it a lot during weddings for my films. And I like it, but I have had some instances where it's either cut out or the wind has just been terrible. Just different kinds of issues that I will talk about. So I'm super interested in the Zoom because of 32-bit flow, obviously, if you don't know, which me basically means that you can't peak and your audio can never be too low. I've seen the tests, it's pretty awesome, but I'll believe it as soon as I can hear it for myself. So I might not go away from the Rode Wireless Go, I've just bought one of the Zoom field recorders, but if I really, really like it for my workflow, especially after this test and maybe after the first wedding that I use, who knows, I may switch. It's kind of a lot of an investment to make if I want to fully switch over since I have two sets of wireless go. But let's find out. So the thing about the Rode Wireless Go is that it is truly wireless, but some of the issues I've had are just when I don't have a clip-on lavalier. So you just turn this guy on and you can see everything on the screen. So if you wanna look at the levels, they're here on the screen. I'm not gonna to talk too much about this because even though this is a versus video, this has been out for so long and people know what it's about. So you can see that the levels are showing for the battery for each the receiver and the microphone. And that's literally it. It clips on to your shirt. I've also got magnets that I can use if I don't wanna clip this on the outside of the shirt. And then the receiver goes on top of the camera. And that's it. You can change some of the levels and uh, you can change them also on your camera, obviously. And that's pretty much it for that. The biggest difference with this uh, Zoom recorder is that it actually requires that you utilize this lavalier, which the clip isn't on here right now, but this is the microphone. So this is like more like a pack. And this is going to ensure that it doesn't come off. Nice locking lavalier there. So this is really meant for just turn it on and really just go. Batteries. Here's the cool thing though. This is actually going to use a micro SD and it's going to record straight in here. So this is both a microphone and a receiver in one. And this just clips on. And this is really, really pretty tight. So there's really no problem there. It does feel a little bit plasticky. This is also plastic, but um, I don't know, it feels a little bit tougher. I wouldn't wanna to toss this around. It is pretty hefty, honestly, with the metal. But um, I did not get the Bluetooth recorder because from what I heard, like this is really supposed to be turn it on and go and it's kind of pointless to be messing with levels and stuff if you're allowed to do that in post. So yeah. My plan here is to wear both of the lavaliers. So right now I have the Rode Wireless Go clip to me, which I am talking into, and it is attached to my camera. Over here, I have the Zoom F2 clip to me. There's obviously better ways to conceal this, but I'm just trying to show you what it looks like, and we're just gonna roll with that for now. So I'm gonna talk in the studio a little bit right now, and then I'm gonna go outside so I can maybe get some wind, some cars, some walking, things that could be affecting my video that I usually would use these for. Here goes. So before I get too excited, I need to remember that I have to turn the back on that's attached to my belt loop. So that's something different because where it's not recording into the camera, I need to hit record when I wanna start and I need to turn it off where I don't need to do that if I'm just rolling on the camera with the wireless go. The recording is indicated by a red light, which is nice. And there's actually a hold button on here too, so that it's not recording. And I believe that maybe holds the battery. I should probably check that out before I tell you that. So if you have a client wearing it, you don't have to worry that they're gonna knock off the record. I think that's really what it's for. 
One of the issues that I had with the Wireless Go was that when my camera was to the back of somebody wearing it, uh, I lost connection a little bit when I really wasn't that far away. So I'm just walking down the street in my neighborhood. Kind of see what each of these mics is picking up as far as footsteps go in birds and ambience. You have to excuse <laughs> the 4K and the ESR because I'm at a 24 to 70 right now and this is as far as my arm extends. So this is probably like 50 mil, so I apologize, but I don't vlog. I'm just gonna talk a little bit because you wanna be able to hear my footsteps obviously while somebody's talking because what we're mostly discussing here is if I'm at a wedding and there's sounds outside, people are driving by, stuff like that. What's the noise level going to be? And I'm wearing headphones because I'm not trying to record this whole video and not be able to know if the sound's working. <laughs> Anyway, I decided to wear blue suede shoes on a rainy day. When it comes to monitoring your sound on the wireless go, if you have it on top of your camera, which you obviously probably do because you are recording into the camera or some sort of device, you can see the levels. So if something starts to peak or there's any kind of problem, you can sort of uh, change the levels as you go. This is not an easy task to do when, uh, when you're trying to do a wedding, um, especially because I'm doing hybrid. I, I probably wouldn't be rolling sound by myself if I was shooting photos because obviously I'm gonna be turning the camera this way and that way. Um, so that's, I mean, it's a plus, right? You can see what's going on. So if you're having a huge problem, you can monitor it. You can't do that with the Zoom because it's on the person. You don't have any way to hear the audio. You have to make sure that you hit record and call it a day. But the reason for that is because it's supposedly with 32 bit flow, it doesn't matter what you record. You can salvage it in post. And it's not about like, oh, we'll just fix it in post. It's about the fact that when you are truly running gunning and you don't have control over the atmosphere, the situation, or if you're gonna have a bride who talks really low, like that can really be a problem. And you cannot, you just can't plan for these types of things. You can plan everything that you want down to a T. You can have as much audio set up perfectly and there's going to be an issue. Audio is such a pain in the ass and I'm really hoping this is going to help me out a lot because I've had so many of these issues in the past and when you're in the middle of a wedding ceremony and it's going, Man, you can't do anything. You're, you're sitting where you're sitting and that's it. I do just want to point out that um, I did not put my camera down on a headstone because I have a feeling that that's either very disrespectful or possibly bad luck or maybe both. So I just had it up on a little kind of ledge thing there. This place is so beautiful. I, I just moved here a couple months ago and uh, just a couple days ago, I started walking around the neighborhood. I've been so busy. And I found this cemetery like really, like very close to my house. And look how gorgeous it is. My headphones are wired into my, um, my Zoom here. It sounds really loud. So that kind of interests me because really it's the peaking that is the problem. Obviously, you know, if the sound's too low that you may not even have sound. I can hear the kids on the other side of these ferns, like they're standing next to me. I don't know what that's gonna sound like on the recording. I'm gonna take my headphones off and see how loud they actually are in real life. I mean, they are pretty loud, not gonna lie. They're just on the other side of that fern. There's a fence and there's like a dick over there. But um, I mean, it really sounds like they're standing next to me in the Zoom recorder. 
Um, so far, I, I can't really tell so far, obviously, um, anything that I'm hearing because I, I need to bring it into the computer, but um, I haven't heard any crunching or anything in my headphones from a peak, so that's a good sign. Just to be fair, right now I'm talking into, right into the wireless go as a, a block without a muff or anything. I don't like the muffs and on the first version of the muff, it falls off if you look at it. So I don't mind the noise in the back because again, I'm kind of trying to see what this is gonna be like. So, but again, to be fair, I'm going to use this lavalier that comes with the zoom and I'm gonna try it out on, on the road. Just make sure we have levels here. Okay, so now we would be recording into the microphone here on my lapel instead of the box here because we're wired in. So this is the same exact spot with the same lawnmower using the lapel. Let's we'll see how that sounds. Right now we are on the wireless go still with the Zoom Lav hooked in. One thing that I have not been able to do, because I literally, this is the first time I've even used this Zoom recorder, is I have not checked how long the batteries last. There's two batteries in there. I'm obviously going to want extras, um, but I'd be willing to bet with an electronic this small, they probably last a long time. I'm sure that somebody else has said something about it in one of their videos. I may have to check that out, put it on the screen. But that's obviously something that's gonna be super important too because on the wireless go, you can see the battery running down. You can't see it on the zoom. But in my case, I feel like I'm probably gonna wire up bride and groom and then most ceremonies are pretty quick. There's no way that it's going to die during a ceremony, even if it's an hour long. I highly doubt that's going to be the case. But obviously have extras on you. Now I realize that my tests are never super scientific and they're sort of off the cuff. I don't really use a script of any kind often, like 99% of the time when I do these videos, but this is real world for me. Walking around, talking, interference, all kinds of noises outside. That's just the reality of what my situation is going to be. And I feel like that's probably the reality of a lot of other people's situations because I don't really know like who's buying this microphone if they're not using it in the field. I mean, it is a field recorder. Sure, you could totally use it in the studio, and actually, it's so much easier than mounting a microphone, obviously, and dealing with all that. I do love using my Zoom recorder, my H6, because it's just so easy and everything's right there. But also, if I could just grab this field recorder, pop it on my belt, and literally hit record, I mean, that in itself is, is a reason to purchase this microphone. <laughs> I'm in the editing and I did just have another thought that I didn't mention, which is that if you have the wireless go attached to your camera, you don't have to sync the audio where everything's all set. That's all it records. But with the zoom, you'll have to sync the audio. I don't really have an issue with this. A lot of people don't like syncing audio, but I'm using Premiere and they're honestly, they're auto sync if your audio is decent and good. I mean, it works really well for me. So I don't really see that as an issue, but it is another layer of audio that you're going to have to add in that you wouldn't have to add in with the road. I'm pretty much finished with that at now and the family's home, so <laughs> I'm not gonna set my whole gear up for a conclusion, but conclusion is that uh, the Zoom sounds a lot better to me. I did have to boost it a ton in post. Um, I didn't use any of my audio presets. I did use preset on the wireless go. I use Maddie Hapoya's presets, they're really good and the wireless go is here and there by itself. Also super echoey in my studio in here. So um, those don't sound that great anyway, but I would say I would probably choose the zoom over the go depending on the job. What do you think?